How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time mid six-figure Amazon seller and in today's video I wanted to just kind of talk with you guys about how last year went for me um, and my plans to do well over a million dollars in sales. Hopefully I'm, my reach goal is going to be to do two million dollars in sales. So I'm going to be going over exactly what I'm going to be implementing in my business so that maybe you can replicate that. Um, maybe get to meet some higher goals that you thought you'd be able to meet. Uh, so for example like in 2021 uh, my original goal was to do $250,000 in sales and I ended up doing a little over $600,000 in sales. So there's a ton of opportunity, um, a lot of kind of tweaks you can make. It's doing some outsourcing, lots of different things you can do to actually massively increase the amount of sales you're going to do. So I just wanted to take a chance to kind of talk with you guys about what I'm going to be doing this year. Uh, maybe you can model your business after that, kind of take inspiration and roll from there so that you're able to be a, be a better Amazon seller than me. That's the goal of the channel. If you haven't checked it out already, I do have a free Amazon seller discord that's going to be linked down below. There's over 12,000 people in there sharing all kinds of great free Free information would love to see you in there let's go ahead and jump into the video So the first major thing that I'm going to be doing this year to meet that million dollar goal, hopefully that $2 million goal, but that million dollar goal has to happen. I'm going to be disappointed with myself if I don't make that happen. Uh, the main way that you can kind of re reverse engineer any goals you have um, is to reverse engineer your spending. Uh, it's it's difficult to control what you're actually selling. Um, obviously, you can use repricers and stuff like that um, to really affect how fast you're able to sell things. But at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of an abstract concept to look at a number and say, Hey, I want to sell a million dollars next year. That sounds really scary. Uh, so what you need to do is break down your goals. Maybe your goal is to do $10,000 next year or hundred thousand dollars next year. Uh, you need to break down that goal in terms of how much money you need to spend to get there and then figure out if you have the, the ability to even spend that much money. Uh, so for me to meet that million dollar goal, uh, the way that I'm going to kind of reverse engineer that is to consider my, uh, my percentage of revenue as my, uh, my buy cost as a percentage of revenue, I guess I should say. Uh, so for example, for me, um, last year during 2021, on every dollar that I sold, 51 cents of that went back to covering the cost of my purchase. So my my buy cost was 51% of my total revenue. So that from that number, I can reverse engineer, figure out how much I need to spend every day, every month, every week to then eventually end up at that million dollar goal. Um, I'm going to be spending more than that because that would be in like a perfect ideal case scenario where, um, you know, your products are selling for exactly what you're hoping them that, that, that they actually sell for. Um, but it's also helped out in the fact that that's my on aggregate average. Sometimes it'll be 30%. It was a great home run product. Sometimes it'll be 70% even. I was liquidating. I lost a little bit of money, but on average, it ended up to be 51 cents per dollar of revenue goes back to covering my buy cost. So what that means for me as a seller who wants to do a million dollars in revenue, that means I have to spend $500,000 next year, $510,000, whatever that would be, whatever that would work out to, to be exact. But I'm just going to call it $500,000. And then I'm able to essentially double that in terms of revenue. Obviously, I'm not doubling that in terms of profit. Um, generally, I'm going to be looking for around a 40% return on investment um, as part of a strategy of going higher volume. Uh, there's a lot of low hanging fruit out there um, that's just a little bit uh, a lot of people are just a little bit too picky on. Um, so I'm going to personally be going a lot heavier into that kind of stuff, just implementing as much capital as I can, um, using that as my competitive advantage to leverage that, spend a ton of money and be able to eventually hit that million dollar goal by spending $500,000. Um, and that probably sounds super intimidating. So maybe we can break it down in terms of maybe your goal is $100,000. Uh, so in that case, you are going to roughly have to spend about $50,000 if you're really good at, at sourcing high ROI products, it'd probably be closer to 40000 maybe even $35,000 uh, that you would actually have to spend. But in, in order to actually meet that goal, super scary goal, right? You set that at the beginning of the year, you write it on your whiteboard. Uh, what does that mean on a day-to-day -day basis? So just divide that by 365, whatever, uh, figure out the exact number of dollars you have to spend every day and, and meet that goal. Don't stop working until you meet that goal. Um, if you're taking a vacation, then spend that a couple days before. So for me, that goal that I have to spend every single day is, I think it's $1,300 $70 or in order to meet my $2 million goal that I'm really, really reaching for, I would be looking to spend about $2,600, $2,700 every single day. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, that sounds really scary, right? So how do you implement the capital? How do you implement the, the, um, you know, the, the pipeline in the back end to actually do that? Uh, because it would be pretty labor intensive to actually spend $2,000, $3,000 a day and then source the products, prep the products, send them off to Amazon. There's no way you're going to be able to do that. That would just take way too much time.
So in order to do that, I'm going to be implementing way more outsourcing in my business. This is something I would definitely suggest for you if you're looking at growing your Amazon business significantly. Um, for one, my biggest priority starting this new year is going to be finding some more product sourcers for me uh, personally, uh, just building out that team. I've already got several virtual assistants who all they do is source products, um, but I want to add to that team um, and make sure that those people are just working for my Amazon business alone um, so that I can buy from those, those products that they're finding as well as the products that I've been buying for for a very long time right uh, so the goal as an Amazon seller is to kind of build up a catalog of products that you can continually go back and replenish and if you're doing it right that that catalog is going to be um, drying up at a slower rate than you're adding new products and that's how you know you're growing um, it's just natural that some products are going to maybe the price goes up at the source website or at your source wholesaler whatever whatever business model you are uh, pursuing the most maybe the price goes up maybe the price tanks on Amazon a little bit it's no longer a good product Product, that would be that product drying up but in, in an ideal world you have the um, the back end you have the virtual assistants you have maybe salaried employees and in, in the states if you're a really big seller um, you have those people adding wholesale accounts and adding new whole online arbitrage leads uh, to your uh, to your Amazon account faster than those other leads are drying up uh, so in order for me to do that um, you know it, it gets to a point where we're kind of operating at scale at this point doing we did a little over six hundred thousand this this year should do like we talked about we're shooting for over a million so that means that I have to build out that sourcing team so that my my leads are drying up slower than we're getting new leads in just because uh, to get there you do have quite a few SKUs um, quite a, quite a few different products that you're selling uh, so I'm gonna be building out that virtual assistant team if you're not familiar with how to hire a virtual assistant there's gonna be a video up in that corner uh, that'll kind of walk you through the process of hiring a virtual assistant it's a lot easier than it sounds um, if you've been on the fence I would highly highly recommend it uh, to actually go ahead and get your feet wet hire a VA you're gonna be glad um, because then it's gonna free up time for you to then go work on um, you know higher ROI tasks higher brain power tasks um, like chasing down wholesale suppliers or developing a private label product uh, there's just there's a lot better uses for your time than sourcing product um, and within that you can also use prep centers uh, prep centers is something I'm going to be leveraging very heavily this year um, I did a lot of in-house prep using uh, I hired my sister but honestly to do one to two million dollars in sales uh, it's probably not fair to uh, trust my high school sister to do all that work um, so I'm going to be leveraging prep centers a whole lot more um, at some at some point I may look into getting a warehouse of some kind but the economics just don't make sense um, personally I think Think the economics start to make sense after about 5,000 units a month um, if you can get a good deal on a warehouse good deal on all that kind of stuff utilities that kind of stuff um, then it kind of starts to make sense um, but that's kind of the math that I've worked out maybe you have a different threshold you're looking for for when you switch to owning to running your own warehouse maybe that's you know maybe that's planning way too far ahead for you um, but that 5,000 unit a month mark is gonna be where I start to look at maybe hiring out a warehouse but then you also have to think about the time commitment of managing employees employees uh, managing you know the, the water bill and the utility bill like there's just a lot of time costs that go into that and maybe there's a point where just using prep centers just makes sense um, so I'm gonna be leveraging prep centers a lot more this year um, as another way to free up my time so I can focus on those higher ROI tasks um, and then on the level of actually having that money to spend so in my case, I'm looking to spend a, a half a million dollars. Um, you know, that's 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 a pretty scary number. Um, and then, so there's been two major ways that I've been able to really increase the amount of capital I'm able to spend. Um, the first major way that I've already implemented uh, is just using um, personally. I've been using Amex business credit cards. Um, don't leverage don't over leverage yourself to the point where you have to pay interest uh, that's not not a good idea uh, just use the credit cards as a way to increase your buying power um, as a way to yeah you just increase your buying power before that product sells um, use those proceeds to cover the the credit card bill um, because as just to the nature of the beast with Amazon it's gonna take pr almost a month it can take up to a month um, after an item sells till you actually get your money if you get the the disbursement schedule wrong that kind of stuff or just get a bad break on your disbursement schedule it can take a while for you to get your money back so having those credit cards the reason I use those Amex credit cards is because they don't have a formal limit on how much you can actually spend so that was awesome during uh, Q4 this year during November I was able to spend hundred and thirty thousand dollars in one month deploy a ton of capital because I was able to leverage those credit cards um, and then I covered that by borrowing money from family and friends doing a little angel investment kind of thing 
Um, so I was able to cover that investment and then everything is all good. That credit card bill has been paid off. Most of that inventory is already sold pretty much uh, that was bought in November. Um, and then we'll be paying out those investors here in just a little bit. Uh, but using those two strategies has been super awesome for me to unlock more capital. Um, and then one more strategy I'm going to be using here pretty soon is taking those Amazon loans. If you're not familiar, uh, you can actually get loans from Amazon. Uh, they'll offer those loans to you through your seller central account. And it's just based on your sales. Um, and I haven't done it yet, but I'm fairly confident uh, that the way it happens is they'll take the payment for your loan just out of your Amazon uh, disbursement. Uh, so it's fairly easy, fairly easily uh, to integrate into your into your business processes. Um, and the APR ranges from about five to 10% is what I've seen. Uh, so I'll definitely be taking one of those loans here in the new year here pretty soon so that I can really level up that, that amount of capital I have to spend uh, and just hit the ground running. So in essence, in order to hopefully over double my Amazon business this year, going from a little bit around $600,000 to over a million is the idea. Hopefully we're going to hit 2 million this year. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, it sounds, it sounds fairly simple. Uh, I'm just going to be hiring as much as possible, outsourcing as much as possible so that I personally can focus on increasing the amount of capital I have and increasing the, the scale at which we leverage that capital. Um, it's, it's really not rocket science. Um, it's just about taking yourself out of the picture as much as possible. Uh, that's kind of the end game here. Uh, hopefully this video wasn't too uh, ranty for you. Hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did get value out of this video, please feel free to add some value to my business and hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate that. Feel free to drop any questions or comments you guys have down below. I'm always happy to answer those, uh, but I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.